Hello crafters and welcome back. Um, so we are just finished with this page. So now we are going to work on the back of this page. And I think this is going to be the last page because I'm finishing the pictures. The only one thing that I'm going to do extra and I still have to think about how I'm going to do it. I'll still show you to you but this is uh, specific to this album is to create a special pocket for this book uh, so the mother of the way brought me this book it's like a baby diary that she maintained when you know he was a baby uh, so she would like to also incorporate this book in the in the album but she doesn't want to destroy it she doesn't want to <clears throat> just take the pictures out she was this entire book inside the album so i still have to think of a way to put this to incorporate this uh, you can see it's a little bit affected by time but at least this is a sleeve in the back it's very it's very bad but it's okay i was thinking probably like creating a pocket to just insert this book so therefore I'm going to need an extra page for that but you guys you can stop once we are finalized with the back of uh, the other page <clears throat> okay what I have here this is actually the matting that is going to go on the page which I haven't yet applied it because we are going to work on some pieces that will get glued behind the matting before it's applied on the page so the only difference is that this matting it's cut at the uh, our regular 10 and 3 quarters okay but here it's 10 and a half so the horizontal of your matting it has to be 10 and a half uh, if especially if you are using the directional paper make sure that your horizontal is a 10 and a half okay we are going to put this on the side for the time being and what I would like you to do next next is to cut <clears throat> six pieces of cardstock at four by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So all of these are cut at four by seven. And let me make sure I cut them correctly. There's no in me. Hmm. Four by seven. And what I would like you to do next, next is to bring in your scoreboard and score each one of these at one inch. <clears throat> so this will uh, take a four by six pictures, but once again, the pictures will be trimmed down like a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. So score at one inch. Again, watch the video first, please, because this is an idea that, you know, panned out in my mind. Whether or not it's going to work, <clears throat> we will see. Okay, so all of these are scored on one inch. going to put this away. And now we are going to fold on our score line. Let me do something about these slips. They bother me. They keep coming down. Okay. So now let's fold on our score lines. Oh, and by the way, in the previous um, video, I kept saying that our previous page would hold 25 pages, which is, of course is incorrect. I mean, 24 pages. I meant to say 24 pictures. Hello. But I guess when you're tired, you're tired. <laughs> You're probably wondering what the hell is she talking about 24 pages you mean 24 pictures Okay, these are nicely scored and 
basically what this they are going to sit three on each side like this so they will be glued on the back of the matting okay of course with the with the space that you need so it's, it's flat the only thing is if we are to glue all of them now at this point uh, it will create too much bulk here where they overlap so what we have to do is to trim a little bit from 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 this uh, bent pieces okay so in order to achieve that let's take three at a time and work on three at a time so I'm going to have a top middle and bottom so I'm going to take the piece that will be at the top and so this is uh, four inches so I'm going to take away half an inch but only from 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 the flap okay so I'm going to mark my half an inch and now I will do this with my scissors and try and be straight Okay, so this is your flap and it took half an inch from this is the top flap and it took half an inch from the from the top uh, sorry this is your top flap uh, your top photo mat and it took half an inch away from the bottom of the flap okay let's do the same to the bottom one only that this time we are going to take half an inch away from the top so once again, let's measure half an inch. And let's do the same thing. So this is your bottom photo mat and in this case it took half an inch away from the top and with this one we are going to take a quarter of an inch away from each end okay <clears throat> so a quarter of an inch so this is the middle piece a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch And let's hope that this worked. Let's see. Um, so if I bring this here, so this is the bottom, this is the top. Okay, top, and this would be the middle. Oh, that I'm gonna want the middle to be. Let's see. So I wanted to make sure that this piece is in the back don't overlap so it doesn't create 
bulk. So we are good there. Now we are going to do the same thing on the other side. Once again, I'm still testing it because I don't want any surprises when it's time to actually work on the project. And it should look fine. The only thing that I don't like is the fact that I don't see it properly equal. I'm trying to see what else do we have to cut from in order to get that wait the wrong one here. We might need to cut a little bit more from from the bottom piece. Yeah, you know what? From the middle piece, let's do half an inch on this on each side. So we are going to cut an extra quarter of an inch on both sides so the middle piece we get cut at half an inch on both sides okay So the middle piece got the flap of the middle piece was cut a half an inch from here and then half an inch from here. So now let's see. Let me test it to make sure that we are good to go like that. You know what, maybe I'm better off cropping more from the bottom and top piece too. Okay, we're going to do that. Um, so I am going to trim another three quarters from the bottom one. And another, I'm going to trim another three quarters from the top one as well.
Okay, so now let's test it. Yep, now it's nice, all is nice and equal here. Great, it's all good. So, in the end, we trimmed an inch and a quarter from the top and bottom, okay? And half an inch from the middle piece on both sides. So let me write this down, so we remember to do the same uh, on, on, on the left side. So one inch and a quarter from the top and bottom and then half an inch from the middle piece on both sides okay before we forget I like to write down measurements and stuff before I forget my thoughts okay so now it's clear we know what we are going to do with the ones on the left so this will be here, like this, in the mirror. So let's take our up top piece, okay? And we are going to trim the, the bottom part at an inch and a quarter, okay? So this is the top piece, so we are going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. So this is the top piece, okay? There we go. So we are going to trim it so it matches its sister, so to speak. Okay. So I'm going to take from here at an inch and a quarter. So let's take the ruler again. Measure an inch and a quarter. Where is my pencil? An inch and a quarter. So this is inch and a quarter. So let's see. See now they match. Now the middle piece we said that we are going to trim half an inch on both sides. Okay, so let's do that now. We got half an inch here and half an inch. Okay, so now it's the same as the other one. Okay, and now the bottom piece, we are going to cut a, an inch and a quarter from the top. There you go. <clears throat> okay. So the top and bottom pieces take you take a quarter of an inch as here and then the middle pictures you're going to take half an inch at the top and half an inch at the bottom like here. Okay. Now Let's put this in pairs on the side. Okay, and I 
I am going to make sure that there is no residue. This is the time to make sure that this is cut nice and straight. If we need to trim a little bit more from that uh, score line, this is the time to do it before you apply it. And it's going to be a little bit tougher. And the other thing what I'm going to do, because I already prepared the picture, so the picture already, uh, you know, uh, cut the sixteenth of an inch all the way around, and I, I use this again. So I'm going to do the same thing for the photo mats. And here, yeah, sometimes I forget to finish my corners. Okay, so now we are ready to apply these uh, mats. And the way we are going to do it, we are going to start with the top, then we are going to do the bottom one, and then we are going to put the middle one in like this to ensure that they are nice and equal. But even when you apply, don't forget about your score line and don't forget that you are going to apply picture on here as well. So allow yourself like a sixteenth of an inch away from, from the mat. So when you apply it, give yourself some space. Say something like this, like a... 16th of an inch, so see this is the score line and I'm like 16th of an inch away from from the score line, okay? So guess what? I'm still going to use my super glue. You might think this is expensive, but actually I bought a like a package of like Eight or ten, I can't remember. For like five dollars from the from the ninety nine cent store, and between you and me, I think this is the best wet glue I have used in my craft so far. But I'm very much disappointed with some of the other glues. All right, so let's make it nice and straight. Very important. Turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Now we're going to do the bottom piece. Okay. So once again, let's put glue. Nice and straight. I hope I'm working on the ten and a half. Yes, I am. Whew. Actually, I just realized I don't. Ah, yes, it is ten and a half. Here. Okay, and now it's time to glue the middle piece. Okay. 
The only thing is, I did a dry run with my pictures only to see in which order I'm going to put them. So I'm, I want to quickly look at my pictures and see which way the, the middle piece falls. Okay. So the middle piece, because I don't want to put the middle piece to, to sit on top of them, I want to put the middle piece to fall under the bottom piece, like that. Okay. So you, you get a little bit of a cascade or waterfall effect, because this is under this and this is under this. Okay. All right, so let's apply our glue. This will be probably the most challenging piece. But um, it's already out. Okay, there we go. We had a huge air bubble. No, don't move, don't move, don't move. Okay. And yes, I'm glue squeezed out. I want this glue to dry before uh, I turn my project over and I'm not blowing from my mouth so I don't blow in your ears so I'm just using my hand to create some extra air okay this is nice and dry so as an approximate I want to give you the measurement like how much of a distance is in between but this is your choice to determine how much do you want to, for the pictures to be overlap. So if I put the ruler here and I close here, I will say it's 5 eighths of an inch. Let's see, is it the same here? Yes. 5 eighths of an inch overlap. But once again, this is your choice. It's just that the way you do it on one side, now you got to do the same on the other side, that's all. Okay, so now these are the pictures on the other side. What I have to do now is to do the corners. Okay, so let's do the, the top and bottom first, okay, and then the middle. So let's start with the top. So the top piece is the one that has the cut at the bottom, okay. Mm 
once again nice and straight don't forget about your sixteenth of an inch distance between the designer paper and your mat okay I should be good yes I am okay Now let's do the bottom piece. Uh, this one requires a little bit of trimming. This is like score line left over. Okay. So the bottom piece is glued with the cut piece on up like this. So let's apply our glue. Okay. So now the only thing left is the the bottom piece, which has to be glued in exactly in the same manner. So this would be the most difficult. Oh 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 oh! I'll cover my super glue. Okay. So it goes under the bottom piece, but at the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open it like this. So the bottom piece are all opened, okay? And I'm going to leave this, which will help me use as a guide to glue it exactly in the same place, okay? So let's make sure we are sixteenth of an inch away. Put it down and move it quickly, especially if I'm using super glue. Okay, I am in line with this one. Yes, I am. And good to go. I hope. Yes. So I did I put it in there and then I aligned with here and then I made sure that I'm aligned with this one that is closed and then I press down. So now there we go. This is our photo mats. I'm going to do a little bit more uh, burnishing at this point so everybody is getting used to sitting where they're supposed to be sitting. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to use, of course, uh, I'm going to use magnets. By the way, what I've noticed from my experience, customers love magnets. Don't ask me why, but they do. I just wanted to see when I did the drawing run of my pictures, which side overlapped which side. And indeed, so the right side, it all it's all down like the way I put the pictures. So the ones that have too, too much going on, like people in it, do not are not uh, being covered by them overlapping so on this side I have the pictures with you know like you have people all the way to the to the edge or on this side I have like you know over here that was covered it's the background um, so indeed the the left side overlaps I mean the right side overlaps um, let me close this 
And now I also want to make sure that I am, yes, okay. If you are using directional paper, make sure you are, because now that you are applying the picture, that's it. There is no return. Okay. But right now, I want to apply the magnets. So this will stay close with magnets. And I think it's enough to add magnets to the top and bottom because the middle one is trapped in there, so you wouldn't require a magnet. Okay, so I'm going to use 3 eighths of an inch, I think. So I need four magnets. And I'll give you the measurement. So this magnet is half an inch from the end of the photomat. So we are going to do the same for the top piece. Okay, and now to apply them on the other photomat, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my magnet, see how it sits there, okay? I'm going to take it and stick it on here the exact same way, so I'm not going to twist it, I'm going to put it down. And now when I'm coming over with this, make sure that it sticks and voila. Okay, so let's do the same for this one. Let's put it down. And take a piece of double-sided tape. So I'm taking from here and I'm putting it on this exactly the same way. I'm not twisting it around. Now I'm going to put it back on. I'm going to close my piece and now it's on the other side. And at this point I'm looking to see whether or not I want to use a magnet for the middle piece. And I think I do. I think I'm going to use a magnet for the middle piece as well. Oh, I didn't want to glue on. That's all right. You will. There you go. So two more magnets. Okay. So once again, taking a little bit of tape. Take one of the magnets. Put it about half an inch away from. This one, it doesn't matter how you put it. It's the other one that's important because otherwise they will reject. Okay, now putting this on your tape. So I'm going to remove it from here and put it on this exact same way. Put it down. And voila. Okay, great. Now I can bring in the pictures that I'm going to glue down. 
whatever they are. So for the time being, I'm going to put the pictures that come here. So let's see which pictures. I remember this one being here, this one being in the middle, and this one, this one at the top. Okay, I think. Let me double check my dry run. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So now let's apply the pictures. So once again, I already cropped the pictures a sixteenth of an inch around because it's black on black, I can't see. So I'm going to use this. And I already chopped the corners. Chopping the corners is an optional step, but trimming your four by six pictures a sixteenth of an inch around, it's quite required because these photo mats are exactly four by six. But if you don't want that border around, then leave your pictures as it is and apply straight on your photo mat. Okay. Open this up. Let's And the last one. No, 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 this is the wrong picture for this. Darn it! Darn it, darn it, darn it. Come on, this glue is such a bad quality, but now it glues down. Alright, this is for here. Yeah, I'm really not pleased with this double sided tape. From now on, I'm just gonna get. The reason, there is a reason why the original uh, double-sided tape is more expensive. I got this from this website. I can't remember what it's called. Because it's, it's their own product. And honestly, I can see the difference between the squonk tape, the real, the real double-sided tape, and this. It's... Uh, Although this is supposed to be 30 yards, a roll of 30 yards is actually smaller than the roll of 25 yards that you get to the squonk tape. So that goes to show how thinner, how much thinner is the, the, the glue. Okay, so see this is what I was talking about. I made sure that the mats or the pictures that will overlap these pictures don't cover people. Okay, so I made sure that they you know, it's background that they cover. Don't cover faces, don't cover people. While these ones, as you can see, they have people all the way to the edge. And if we're covering, we're gonna cover some legs, but we're not covering, you know, a full person or a face or, okay. Now I have to remember in which order, which one is top, bottom, etc. You look again at the, I think you just saw my, uh, my security code. All right, so 
Yes, it's, it's exactly the older. My phone security code. But I'm sure you're not going to steal it, so I'm not going to change it. <laughs> okay, so let's set this one to the top since we already removed the, the tape backing. Got to be a bit of paper there. Hope my head is not in the way. Okay. The middle one would be this. Voila. Let's clean up. So I st we now we're gonna put pictures on the back. Once again, um, let's make room. Okay. So on the back. I do, did not look at an order for these pictures. So let's see what do we have and what can we use and where. Actually, let me do it. So I got this. So this should be on the back of this one because it looks like under the same age. Uh, okay, this is with family. Actually, no, I think I want to put this one here. This is the father and this is the mother. This is just being kids, so it matches the other side. And this is with other children. Something like this. Okay, so this will be on the other side. So I'm going to put them away like this so I know exactly where to glue them. So now let's open this side one at a time. I hope I remember to remove the tape from all the magnets so far. I always forget to do that. So now let's close 
this side or working on this side. So this will be the bottom picture. And the last picture. Actually, the last picture for this video because we are going to do something about the middle as well. So we've got 12 pictures already on this page. Not bad. Of course this will be don't worry this will be glued down on on the base page. So right now it's just the uh, pulling up because it's not glued down and I love these two pictures and these are the pictures that I would like to incorporate here so once you open all of these pictures you see these pictures and I have to think of a way to see how I incorporate both because they are very big they are 8 by 6 and I do have something in my mind but I have to think a little bit more about it you know like alright so let's make it clear I'm not saying that I'm inventing all these uh, pop-ups. They are definitely out there. But mechanisms may be similar, but in this case they are actually adjusted to, to be able to be used for a photo album. So um, measurements are rethought and um, while well, the mechanism works the same way, the sizes are different. And uh, just so you know that when it comes to the to the pop-up uh, graduation hat. That's actually my own design. That's my only my my thought about it and the way I. That's my design. That's why there is there is another uh, person out there that made one. And when I looked at the end template, is wrong. And actually, I tried to do it, and it doesn't even sit nice and flat. It raises a lot, and it pulls away from the paper from underneath. And actually, looking at the reviews. A lot of uh, people that purchase his template, which I did not, but you know, on the internet you can find everything. So I did find his template. That's the truth. And other people were uh, were complaining about the same thing. So then, when I tried this, and hmm, this is the same thing here. So then, I just didn't even look at the template anymore. I did it by myself from scratch, thinking about the angles, how they should be equal in order to be able to sit nice and flat when 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 you open it up without you know pulling from the sides and therefore pulling from your paper from your project and also the the upper part of the head would not stay flat so I adjusted that to also stay flat. So that's why I'm saying I'm not saying that I'm inventing the popas because this is not true. Popas have been invented since like I don't know 1800s if not even earlier than that. But I'm using existing pop as inspiration for this album by and I am adjusting the mechanisms or the sizes in order to, to fit the photo album instead of being like just you know cartoons. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in a little bit with the middle of the uh, to see if my idea to apply these two pictures here in the middle is going to work. Bye for now guys.